what's up guys, it's Bridget, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a favorites video. Today we're going to talk about some underrated makeup products. I feel like I do this type of video quite often, and that's because I feel like most products in the makeup community are reviewed and then forgotten about. Or some are in favorites videos, but most of them aren't. So today I'm going to talk about some products that need some more love. So without any further ado, let's jump into the video. Alright guys, so let's get started with this. Of course, all makeup products on this channel are cruelty free. So let's get started. First one I want to mention is from an indie brand. This is from Pinky Rose Cosmetics. It is something I reviewed, I love, and I see it on Instagram in like tutorials, but I never see it on YouTube. And this is the Pinky Rose Cosmetics Bright Lights Palette. Now I've complained about the packaging before. The packaging is very pixelated, not a very high resolution image. But the inside is gorgeous and the colors are so pigmented they blend very well absolutely amazing palette most of them are mattes and then we have a couple of these glitter shades i love the fact that most of them are matte we have one or two shimmers in here too but it's just a great formula i love the yellow i love the yellow i love the green i love all of these colors they're so good they're so pigmented they blend there's not much fallout and they're on the drier side of a matte shadow, so they're not quite as like soft as an Anastasia shadow, but they're not quite as hard as, say, an Urban Decay shadow. So they're right in between. They're a perfect formulation, and I love this palette. So next up is another palette we're going to talk about, and this is one that I saw get reviewed when it first came out, and then I have not heard anything else about it, and I feel like it needs a little bit more attention, and this is the ColourPop Fame palette. Now, right after this one, the kind of warmer tone came out, the Fortune palette. But this is the Fame palette. It is the first, like, cool tone palette. Now, I see so many people, like, a ton of people complaining that, oh, all these eyeshadows are all just warm palettes. Well, then let's talk about a cool tone palette. This is a kind of cool tone brown neutral palette from ColourPop. It's a little more pricey than the rest of them, but they do have an extra row of shadows here. I don't really... I'm not crazy about these two, these three colors right here. The whole bottom row is just kind of dark and a little bit smoky for me, but if you do like smoky eyeshadows, this will work. I just love how all of these blend. They're very soft shadows, very pigmented, and I feel like this is a lot of shadows for a great price. ColourPop shadows are the best formula, and I love this palette very much. And since everyone complains about warm tone palettes, this cool one is one that I can definitely recommend for you, and I don't see people talking about it anymore. Alright, so next up is a Suva Beauty Block Party palette. This has not been out for too long, but I feel like it needed more of like a boost on release. I reviewed it. I reviewed um, the palette itself. I did a look with it, and I feel like a really pretty milkshake. This is the inside of the palette. Ugh. You guys know I have a weakness for a yellow eyeshadow. I love yellow eyeshadow, and this has a beautiful one, but it also has like a really cool aqua color, a white matte base. You know, one of my favorite things in eyeshadow palette, as well as a yellow shadow, is a light color for your base that's matte. This has a white, so that works out perfectly. I kind of prefer like a cream color because it works better on all skin tones, but it has a nice base. It is a beautiful formulation. These are very pigmented. We have a combination of different types of formulas in this palette matte shimmers it's very good not very chalky not very dry not very soft and lose too much pigment not too much kickback on it the mattes have a little bit of kickback but i just usually just pick it back up when i go back in the pan and it's really good and i like it a lot and i feel like this mirror is just like reflecting everything in this room <laughs> all right so i think that's all the palettes i'm going to mention let's move on to something else so let's talk about a primer that i love this is the ColourPop rose quartz primer i put this in a lot of videos before you guys have heard me talk about it a ton. You're probably tired of me talking about it. But I love this thing. It's my everyday primer. It just, it's very simple. It's just a pink like liquid in here. I've tried the amethyst one, which is purple. I'm not a fan of that scent. This one, though, is so good. I love it. It's just an easy, like, done. It smells good. It's very light on the skin. I feel like it gives my skin a little bit more hydration than the regular sprays that don't really soak into the skin. And it's a great primer. And I love it. And sometimes you can catch me using it when I don't have any makeup on just because I like the way it feels in my face. <laughs> Alright, so we have some more primers. I'm going to talk about a couple primers in the video because I don't feel like they don't get talked about that much. Like, you never see just like a primer review or something is usually in something else. So, give us a moment to the little primers that set our face and get them ready for the day. This next one is the Wet n Wild Dewy Primer. Um, it just looks like this. It's $4.99 or you can get like a dollar off coupon at Walgreens sometimes make it like $3.99 very good it has like glitters and shimmers in it it does have a little bit of like don't get everywhere don't get everywhere 
has a little bit of color to it. It, um, but when it blends in, it gives like a nice glow to the skin. It's very dewy. Now, personally, I'm not a fan of like glittery, sparkly primers in general, but I feel like when you put like a light to medium coverage over this dewy primer, it makes your skin have such a nice radiance to it. It really warms up your skin, makes you look really summery and beautiful. And I really recommend it because it's not one of those super, super sticky ones that don't really want to go down matte after they dry down. But this one dries down perfectly. And I like it because it's affordable and you can get it at the drugstore, which is really easy for you guys to be like, if I see it, I'll pick it up. I kind of like that. Next primer is one that I just reviewed a couple weeks ago. I did a get ready with me. Um, this is the Ofra Cool as a Cucumber Primer. I love this one too. I've been using this one and the Rose Quartz one. It smells so good. And I like that you use this and it doesn't have like a stickiness to it. It kind of settles into your skin. It doesn't leave like a residue, which I love. I, I was really worried this was going to have like a really sticky residue afterwards. I even use it as my moisturizer at the end of the day, not just a primer because it's a primer slash moisturizer. So it's a really great moisturizer as well as a primer. And I feel like when you have two uses for something, I'm all about that. All right, so we do have one regular moisturizer to talk about. It's not technically makeup. It's a moisturizer, but I like it and it's affordable. And you can get it everywhere. I got it from Walmart. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Serum. That is not an exciting title for a primer. Or not a primer. A serum. It's it's just this hydrating serum. It's just a moisturizer. It's very good. It leaves a tiny baby bit of residue. But I don't mind it because, you know, it's e.l.f. price. You get a ton of product in here. Comes out clear. Doesn't have much of a smell. Yeah, it doesn't have much of a smell. It rubs into the skin very well. It doesn't make it feel too weird. It leaves a tiny baby bit of residue, but it's nothing bad. And I really like the prime. Uh, no, that's what I'm saying about all of these. I just like it. I do. All right, so we have one face powder I'm gonna talk about very briefly because you guys have heard me talk about it a ton and no one else talks about it. I've seen it in one other video. I've seen it in It's Likely Makeup, Full Face of Wet n Wild. That's the only time I've ever seen this in someone else's video. And I've been using it for six years now. This is the Reserve Your Cabana Wet n Wild Bronzer. It's great. I'm going to get a new one so that way when I show you on camera, it doesn't look <laughs> like it's seen a better day. But it's a very good bronzer. Now people comment and say, this looks like the same shade as your face. It just gives myself a little bit of a glow. It bronzes up a little baby bit. Nothing super dramatic where I'm going to look really orange and nothing that's going to make me look even paler than I already am. It's just a very good bronzer. I like to just dust it after I set my face with translucent powder and then I'll set my face with a setting spray and it kind of locks it in on top and it looks great. I really like it because it's not very glittery. It's not very super warm and bronzy. You know, it just gives like a little bit of a color to the face. Alright, so we have three highlighters. Let's talk about the liquid one first. And this is the Mega Glow Halo Halo from Wet n Wild. I've mentioned before that I don't use this as much as I think I should. It's a good product and I think it's underrated. I think I underrate it myself sometimes because I forget to use it. I did use it today. I put it down as like a little base for my inner corner highlight and then I put a powder highlight over it. If you do use it as your cheek highlight though, it does blend in beautifully. It doesn't mess up your foundation and it settles in very nicely to the skin just by tapping with the fingers. You can use a beauty blender as well if you want like a seamless blend, but just a tap with the finger into your foundation looks beautiful. Now you can use this after your foundation's already set or you can use it with no foundation. It's like, it's a very good product. I do find that if I set my face um, and then put this on, I need to be careful not to like press too hard to smear my foundation, but if you just do it on top of fresh foundation not set yet, it blends in so beautifully and it looks completely natural, but with like a little bit of a pink hue to it. And I really like it. I need to use it more. All right, so the next highlighter I'm going to talk about is one I'm going to talk about briefly because they are retiring this brand and they are transitioning away from this theme, retiring their products and turning into a new theme about animals. And this is Makeup Monster Cosmetics. This is the abominable... Highlighter. The, the reason I'm mentioning this today is because I don't hear anybody talking about it. Um, I won't be talking about it anymore because it is going away. But they're doing like a buy one get one free sale I believe on all their products. And it's just a really pretty blinding highlighter. It's like a white silver. It's comparable to Glacier and the Jeffree Star Platinum Ice Pro Palette. But it's on it's own. It's very, very reflective, very metallic, not very glittery. And I like it a lot. I wish... This product was staying. Maybe just change the name of it, you know, because I like this a lot. People should be able to get this all the time, not just because you're retiring the brand. 
So next up we have a highlighter by Becca, and I don't know why it's little and gold. Um, it looks like this. I'm not the biggest fan in the world of Becca highlighters, but this is one I don't see people talking about, and I think it's very pretty. This, I don't know why this is gold, because I got it used. But this is the Becca Light Chaser Highlighter Champagne Dream. It is very cute. It's little tiny, and it's... It's just like a kind of peachier color but when you swatch it and you put it on your face you can see like a pink kind of hue to it it's very beautiful not very glittery again becca highlighters are a little more powdery than other highlighters that i've tried but they're still very reflective very beautiful and i like this one i think it's nice all right so we're getting down to the last few items here let's talk about one brow product that i've seen not many people talk about Ever. And it's been out for a long time, so maybe I just missed the craze around it, or maybe there was none. This is the NYX Tame and Frame Tinted Brow Pomade. I have the shade of black. It is great. So you see everyone talking about the Dip Brow Pomade by Anastasia because it is an amazing freaking product. I love it. But this is another one. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't look very good in there, I promise. But it's a very good, long-lasting brow pomade. It doesn't dry out like the Anastasia one does eventually. This one kind of just stays its own consistency. It's not very wet. It's not very liquidy. It's kind of like in the middle. It's not like a dusty powder either. It's a very good pomade. It lasts a long time. It's affordable. And I also kind of like like this frosted glass container. It's cute. Good product. All right, so next up is one that I talk about on my channel all the time, depending on the color I'm talking about but no one else seems to use them. And this is the Suva Beauty Hydra Liners. I already talked about the Suva Beauty Block Party Palette, so I pulled out one of the new Block Party Hydra Liners, and this is Grape Soda. They are liquid activated, water activated Hydra Liners. They're just eyeliners, really. But they look like this, if we can get this to focus on it. You can just put, I usually just drop a drop of Visine in it, I know people don't like me using Visine on everything, but it's a convenient little dropper. You can do a spritz of setting spray in here. You can do one little bink of drop of water in here. Um, sometimes you can just take, a, you have a drink next to you, slide your fingers over that sweat off the glass, flick it in the thing. It's activated. It's good. I really like it. I use it for my brows. My brows are using the Grease Hydra Liner. They last so long. It's so easy to blend. And sometimes if I put a drop of water in here, I'll close this thing up after using it. I'll open it up the next day and I don't have to add another drop of water. It's still activated. It's still good. I love it. These are so pigmented. They don't get watery. They're not liquidy. They stay all day. I can rub my finger over my brow and it's still going to stay on. It's just a really good product. I love that they come in a million different colors. Like we have the grape soda one. I have a peach one. I have the grease black one. I have the blue one, it's like a bright blue, and these are just fantastic quality and people need to use them more because they're good. If you're going to spend all this money on like a Kat Von D tattoo liner, you might as well spend the money on like a nice indie brand that's cruelty free and has amazing color choices. Okay, so we have two lipsticks to talk about. I'm going to run through this first one very quickly because again, I've talked about this too many times to count at this point. And it's the BH Cosmetics Rosy Ray Liquid Lipstick. Someone else on YouTube. Hey, if you do YouTube, talk about this product. It's so good. I don't know why people don't talk about it. It is a beautiful kind of rosy nude liquid lipstick. It smells like... What's it smell like? Candy or something. It's like cotton candy? I don't know. It's not cotton candy though. It just smells sweet. It smells like a dessert. It smells great. The only complaint is the brush. It has like little furries on it, but you can use a disposable wand. It's such a good formulation. It's eight bucks. And sometimes they have coupons on BH Cosmetics. And I love this thing. It comes in a stick form too. If you don't like liquid lipstick, it's not drying to the lips. It dries down completely matte. And I could sing the praises for about an hour about how much I love this lipstick. And it makes my teeth look a little bit wider than they actually are. Last product is one that I might have mentioned before. I'm not entirely sure. And this is the Velvet 59 Sweetheart Liquid Lipstick. Again, you can see it next to this one. I, I kind of like the same kind of color. This one's lighter. This one's on the darker side because it is for every skin tone. I feel like if you have a deeper complexion, this color might not work on you because it is on the dustier side. But also, it might be beautiful. I don't know. 
This is the Sweetheart Liquid Lipstick. It is so good. It's a little tiny baby bit drying to the lips, about as much as a NYX liquid lipstick if you want to compare that or a ColourPop Ultra Matte. It's about that drying level, but it is a very beautiful color. I just like the color. I like a mauve blushy pink color. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Let me know one underrated makeup product you never see people talk about online in the comment section down below. I'd love to see what you think no one talks about because some people, I make these videos and they're like, I hear about that all the time. You're crazy. I'm like, I guess we don't watch the same people. I don't know. Anyways, thank you guys so much. I will see you in the next video. I hope you get every day. If you want to subscribe before you leave, I'd really appreciate it. Bye.